a uh, mission statement I created in college was each day I work to build a legacy, not to be defined by my greatness, but by the masses I inspire to be greater than myself. And it's all about paying it forward. And what better way than to do that with the love of my life? Who's a woman who other than black people have been oppressed since the dawn of time. So it's like, I'm, I just want to do that. I want to do that with her. This is a perfect example of what we need in our culture because part of the system to keep us oppressed is to have us believe that we can't do this. We can't build exactly. like this. And they wanted to put that in our young girls and our young sons and make them believe, oh, having a, a marriage, having kids and building generational mm-hmm. wealth. No. You know why? Because black women are too hard to deal with. <laughs> black men are too angry. That's part of the, that's what they want. Right. That's what they want. I want to be a part of the narrative that changes that and say, yes, we can, because we were kings and queens, and this is what we do. And, and we, we did it are. before y'all did it. In this video, I'm going to be talking about marriage in the Black family. I'm going to be breaking down this video into three parts. The first part will be about the history of the Black family. The second part will be about why marriages fail within the Black community. And the third part will be about financial benefits when it comes to marriage. So I came across this artwork, this cartoon that you guys see here on my Instagram, and it really moves me to talk about the black family in marriage because I feel like so many people think that I push marriage for the wedding ceremony, the wedding dress, the ring, the attention. And that is not why I push marriage so strongly on my platform. It's not even for traditional reasons or religious reasons. I really believe in the value of black families and marriage and how it's very beneficial to black economics. And I don't see a lot of people really talk about that. Um, people like to put so much focus on marriage and how dysfunctional it is because they came from a dysfunctional household where both parents were married and it just really overshadows what marriage is really for and the reasons behind marriage. And I feel like because people grew up in a dysfunctional household, they really don't know why marriage is what it is and why it's so important. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that today. But I'm going to start with the history of the black family. I'm going to narrate this cartoon here, starting to the left. You heard him, Tyrone. It's my turn. Hand me the whip. Smacks lips. Nah, man, you're going to be all extra with it. I said switch places, goddammit. Now, basically, this is during slavery time. And... This is what they used to do to break the black man down and to build up the black woman. This is why you have women, black women particularly, walking around saying men are disposable. And this has been created or this was created during slavery time. So when you see a black woman say men are disposable, They're getting that from the slavery mentality. Black Love at a Glance, starring Tyrone and Tanisha, aka the methodical cultivation of distress, dishonor, and strategic dissolving of allegiance within Black relationships that ultimately led to the dismantling of Black families, the hardening of black women, and emasculation of black men at a glance. What does this mean? The dismantling of black families originated from slavery times because the black family was seen as a threat. And why was the black family seen as a threat? Well, first off, when you have a black man and a black woman working together, that's very, very threatening, okay? 
because then that means black people can compete if you want to look at it like a competition against white supremacy and that threatens white supremacy so of course i had to pull up the willie lynch letter and i can't read it out loud because youtube will flag my video but you guys can read it and kind of come up with your own opinion as to what it really means but basically when you don't marry, especially in today's society, you are playing in the hand of the enemy. You not getting married is what they wanted you to do. That's what white supremacy wants you to do. They don't want you to get married because that threatens white supremacy. They don't want the black family to come together and build economic wealth within the black community because it threatens, again, white supremacy. So when you are saying things like, I don't want to get married, it's just a piece of paper. So is having a degree. So is a birth certificate. So is uh, your passport for when you leave the country. So many important documents, legal documents are pieces of paper, but without them, there are certain things that you can't do. There are certain privileges that you won't have. There are just so many benefits when it comes to these documentations that people just want a label oh it's just a piece of paper so when you are saying things like it's just a piece of paper it's just a piece of paper it really shows the lack of knowledge on what that piece of paper really represents and marriage will strengthen black economics within black communities so when you don't marry you're not helping your children you're not helping your grandchildren you're not helping your great-grandchildren if anything you're keeping them oppressed because because marriage back during slavery times in black families, they did what they did to keep us oppressed. They did what they did to keep us down. They did what they did to destroy and dysfunction the black family purposely because they knew what that would do to white supremacy. In 1960, 5% of America's children entered the world without a mother and father married to each other. By 1980, it was 18%. By 2000, it had risen to 33%, and 15 years later, the number reached 41%. For blacks, even during slavery when marriage for slaves was illegal, black children were more likely than today to be raised by both their mother and father. Economist Walter Williams has written that, according to census data from 1890 to 1940, a black child was more likely to grow up with married parents than a white child. For blacks, out-of-wedlock births have gone from 25% in 1965 to 73% in 2015. For whites, from less than 5% to over 25%. And for Hispanics, out-of-wedlock births have risen to 53%. What happened to fathers? The answer is found in a basic law of economics. If you subsidize undesirable behavior, you will get more undesirable behavior. In 1949, the nation's poverty rate was 34%. By 1965, it was cut in half to 17%, all before President Lyndon Johnson's so-called War on Poverty. But after that war began in 1965, poverty began to flatline. From 1965 until now, the government has spent over $20 trillion dollars to fight poverty. The poverty rate has remained unchanged, but the relationship between poor men and women has changed dramatically. That's because our generous welfare system allows women, in effect, to marry the government. And this makes it all too easy for men to abandon their traditional moral and financial responsibilities. Psychologists call such dependency learned helplessness. How do we know that the welfare state creates Disincentives that hurt the very people we're trying to help, they tell us. In 1985, the Los Angeles Times asked both the poor and the non-poor whether poor women often have children to get additional benefits. Most of the non-poor respondents said no. However, 64% of poor respondents said yes. Now, who do you think is in a better position to know? Tupac Shakur the late rapper once said, 
I know for a fact that had I had a father, I'd have some discipline, I'd have more confidence. He admitted he began running with gangs because he wanted the things a father gives to a child, especially to a boy. Structure and protection. Your mother cannot calm you down the way a man can, Shakur said. You need a man to teach you how to be a man. The hardening of black women continues through single motherhood. And it continues because they incarcerate our black men. If you look at the percentages, I won't even get into that in this video, but I mean, they're taking black fathers out of the home, which is causing more dysfunction within the black community. And it's passed down from generations to generations. Also, the dysfunction of black marriages, it started way before today, you know, and I hate it when people blame marriage for the dysfunction. It's almost like a fat person saying, oh, I'm fat, so I'm going to blame food. No, it's your behavior. You know, is it is your mental health OK? Are you emotionally stable when it comes to marriage or say food? You know, I don't like it when people like to blame things for their problems. A lot of people enter marriage and they have had no sense of counseling, no therapy, or they're not aware of their childhood trauma. Um, they're not even aware of trauma and how it affects them in their adulthood. So how do you expect marriage to function well within your household? So I feel like more people should apply more focus to themselves and who they are as individuals and not so much on let's blame marriage for my problems. No, it's you. You are the problem. A lot of people enter marriage and they're not even aware of who they are as individuals, but they expect for the person that they enter into a marriage with develops or gives them that sense of identity. And you have to have your identity prior to marriage. It's not something that you find once you marry. I wanted to marry later in life because I watched my grandmother and I watched my mom. They all got married young and I didn't want that for myself because I didn't want to do it out of the expectations behind getting married for a woman. And you know, what's the appropriate age? What's the appropriate time? I didn't give a shit about that. I was more focused on making sure I was whole within myself before I entered a marriage, just because I wanted to be mentally and emotionally sound. I didn't want my kids to, and when you're raised by a father who was raised by a single mother, there are things that you experience in your childhood, like emotional neglect. You know, my dad, he didn't know how to have an emotional relationship with me, which caused me to have issues within myself, which then traveled into my adult life. And I had to work on those things and I am still working on those things. I am still working on affection, how to show affection, how to give it. So I don't want this to transfer into my children. So I decided that I was going to marry later in life. And I've stuck with this decision because it's so important to me to not continue these generational curses within my family. It's so important to me. It's so, so important to me. I don't care if you guys go out of order when it comes to getting married, like if you have kids first, whatever the case may be, but don't eliminate marriage altogether. Still make marriage the end goal because there are benefits. And if anything, you owe it to your ancestors to marry and to create generational wealth because they never got the chance to do that. And I'm sure if you spoke to them today, those are one of the things that they wanted to do, but they couldn't because they didn't have the privilege. They didn't have the opportunities to do so. You do have the privilege. You do have the opportunities. When you look at the historical experience of African Americans in the United States, uh, you have to start with the experience of slavery and the vestiges of slavery in terms of the, tra the trauma associated with it. And I think that um, you know, blacks continue to experience uh, trauma in, in, in certain ways and certainly with respect to 
those who live in urban communities that are uh, sort of uh, infested with drugs or that are particularly violent, those are traumatic situations that they experience on a daily basis. Certainly, uh, as we've seen in, um, in recent events, interactions with the police can be, again, particularly traumatic. So when you talk about mental illness in the black community, I think you have to begin with the experience of trauma and how trauma continues to abound in, um, in their experiences and in their, in their daily lives. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the benefits of marriage. So marriage is considered to be good economics. It creates economic developments and growth. And let's get into economics. So the branch of knowledge concerned with the production, consumption and transfer of wealth within the black community is considered to be great economics. And if blacks are not marrying, it can result in economic collapse. So society would lose access to credit, banks would close, demand would outstrip supply of food, gas, and other necessities. If the collapse affected local government and utilities, then water and electricity would no longer be available. Marriage is important to economics for these reasons. So example, if you find within your community that is considered to be the black community, where maybe there aren't any hopeful grocery stores or all these, or more like health, conscious type of grocery stores um, like Sprouts. It's because we lack that economic value within our communities. Instead, we have McDonald's on every corner. We have Wendy's on every corner. We have Taco Bell. We don't have a community center in some cases. Um, you may even have to drive further out towards the suburbs to go to your bank that you bank with. I mean, I could go on and on as a result as to what economic collapse really means within our communities. So when you take away from the black family, the black dynamic, people not getting married, people not creating that generational wealth for their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, that is the result. So when you look around in your communities and you're hollering, you know, oh, I don't need a man for this. I don't need a man for that. Men are black men are disposable. You are the reason your community looks the way that it looks. Also, black men not stepping up and committing in marrying these women that maybe they impregnate or maybe they are shacking up with you are part of the problem as well so i wanted to make this video because so many people give me a hard time about why i push marriage so hard on my platform i really don't care about a traditional marriage it doesn't matter if you are two black lesbians or if you're two black gay men i really don't give a shit about that i care more about the unity the partnership and what that really means the piece of paper that so many people claim to be just a piece of paper it holds a lot of value and a lot of privilege so i really want you guys to think about marriage more in this aspect and not the aspect of it's dysfunction, it's just a ceremony, it's just this, it's just that. It's so much deeper than that. And you owe it to your ancestors to really consider marriage and actually enter a marriage without the dysfunction and create a black dynamic when it comes to the family, the black family. I really want your opinion on this topic, you guys. Comment down below. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.